My name is Javier Gonzalez. I am a assistant professor in uh, the Global Languages uh, and Cultures program at CSUCI, but I am also a longtime record store guy uh, for a long time, and I also I did mention a long time in the record stores. <laughs> yes, so I know a lot about uh, records and music culture in general, mostly older stuff, which is what I'll be talking about today. And I was also in bands for many years, and I appreciate, uh, you know, the music aspect and recording aspect and the gear aspect and all of that about it, too. California beach music, well, the influence begins in the late uh, 1950s and 1960s. It also goes kind of hand in hand with the first surf movies, which uh, were done by a guy named Bruce Brown. He's most famous for Endless Summer. Uh, if you go to the um, Santa Barbara Harbor there, there's a building where the Maritime Museum, there's, there's a big mural of the poster of that, and there's uh, some ads from Fender Guitars, which I'll get into a little bit uh, as we talk about. And so the, the movies, of course, needed a soundtrack, and the actual first uh, surf music soundtracks were cool jazz music, which was a West Coast uh, variant of jazz music that uh, a little different than the East Coast, which is better known in some sense. But uh, as the years went on, you know, he incorporated rock and roll, which was the sound. There's two main roads that surf music takes in the 1960s when it develops. There's the vocal surf music, as is best known with uh, the Beach Boys, of course, and Jan and Dean, who were uh, California natives and based around here, grew up with this. This was their backyard. And then there's the instrumental surf music, which developed from a trend in the late 50s of instrumental rock and roll in general, and from the success of certain bands, which weren't actually even from California, bands called uh, The Ventures, you might have heard of them. They're actually from Tacoma, Washington, which I don't think has a beach even, but it does have the ocean. And a band called The Shadows, which was from London, um, who wrote one of the most famous tunes that became associated with surf music, which is called Apache. But uh, not to say that it didn't develop here, because this was the hub of activity. So probably the most important musician uh, is a guy who lived a bit down the coast. His name was Dick Dale. Uh, he is uh, probably the surf music's first great guitar hero and super, super bad as far as uh, his playing. He played upside down, and he was left-handed. And he had a, he had a background, a, a Lebanese background in his family, so he learned to play the oud, which is a Middle Eastern instrument first. So that really fast picking that you associate with uh, surf guitar music, the you know, that, that he developed that from, from listening to Middle Eastern music and the oud. Uh, which brings us to one of the things about California, it's a confluence of cultures, of course, uh, and so here we have rock and roll, which is very much an American invention, inserting different themes that are local. You know, you hear a lot of Spanish themes in the music, you hear the Middle Eastern themes in the music, uh, and you know, and it, and it grows from there, right? So, so there's lots of bands, the Surfaris, uh, the Challengers, you know, that I can go on and on. And then there's also these bands that didn't really exist as bands per se, which were, uh, these studio guys uh, called the Wrecking Crew. They're very well known uh, among the as backup bands. You know, they backed up the Monkees, and you know, they actually recorded the music on a lot of pop records in the '60s. But they also recorded a lot of surf music because, from basically 1962 until 1967, when uh, with the psychedelic acid rock comes in, it's that's that's a very very uh, you know prevalent sound all around. And Wrecking Crew, Tommy Tedesco, he's, he's the main guitar player guy, and his sound is, is also very important amongst all this. But, you know, I'm leaving out hundreds of people who were important, of course. It's, uh, so the culture, uh, you know, the whole California imaginary, how it was marketed. So it being rock and roll, rock and roll is one of those things that was, it was the first thing that really catered to young people, you know, starting in the 50s and even growing more so in the 60s. So, the surf movies and the surf music, you know, 
there were people out there that were waiting to go to movies, buy popcorn, buy records, and you know, and it also goes hand in hand with the car culture, which was also a big deal. So Bruce Brown also did motorcycle movies and hot rod movies. So so there's a there's a crossover with that too. So um, a guy named Davey Allen, who was a, another guitar guy who had his his band, he did some surf music in the '60s, but he moves into the hot rod and. Uh, and motorcycle soundtracks as well. And so uh, there's this confluence of things. Now, the thing about the instrumental music is that it makes it uh, very accessible uh, to people who don't understand English. So there is a surf music, uh, rock music culture in different countries as well. So uh, one of those countries is Peru. Peru per produced uh, a couple of the greatest surf bands not from the United States and not from Japan, which is the other place. Um, uh, there's a band called Los Belkings, Los Jaguars, Los Hangten, you know, uh, <laughs> because there's a beach right in Lima, uh, it's Callao Beach, where there's a whole beach culture that developed there too. And so this, this whole exportation of American culture, the California imaginary, you know, this beautiful lifestyle, this beautiful place we have that people want to partake in either vicariously through the records or the movies, or when they have their own beach, you know, insert their own, um, you know, their own stamp on it as well. Now, the thing about Japan, the Ventures were the most popular band in Japan in the 1960s, even more so than the Beatles were, uh, which is pretty shocking considering the Beatles were uh, pretty much it, you know? Uh, and so that developed the whole culture of surf uh, style rock music there. And uh, Takeshi Terauchi is the famous uh, Japanese uh, surf guitar player. And what they did is they, they combined this typical instrumentation, which was two guitars, bass and drums. Um, and he put, uh, and they started using uh, Japanese folk themes to, to add to it. You know, this also happened in Turkey. This happened in the Middle East. This is it's the that this sound got infused into all sorts of things. So, uh, and then that kind of died off in the at the late in the late 60s. Uh, you know, the more acid rock, hippie, psychedelic music. But uh, it's something that was you know was revived in the 80s, 90s, and there are hundreds of neo-surf bands that have come to be in the last 20 years and it's still around you know right now uh i mean if anybody wants to know more about it just go on the blogosphere and you can find virtually all the information you could ever want and then some about it so and then one one more thing i would going back to dick dale and, and the equipment uh fender guitars is based in uh, was was based in fullerton california and they build amplifiers too and so Dick Dale, he played in these big ballrooms and he was very popular. He needed a louder amp. He got Leo Fender to build him a louder amp. Uh, he played Fender guitar. So the look, the style, the sound is all very oriented towards Fenders and another company called Moserite, which was also here in California, which uh, sponsored the Ventures. So the Ventures played the Moserites, so Dick Dale played the Fenders. So, so as we can see, you know, it's a confluence of the beach itself, inspiration, the kid culture, uh, the different cultures that Im influence the music itself, how it's composed and performed, and you know the economics of it of being able to market all this stuff. So these movies, this music, you know, the album covers, seeing these guys looking cool on their surfboard. There's a Fender ad with a guy playing a guitar on his surfboard, which is that whole, you know, when there's an imaginary like that created, it's like, okay, this looks like a better life. This looks like a place I could go, not just to stay on, stay for a couple of days on vacation, but to be for a long period of time. And given how booming the economy was at that point, um, it was a possibility too.